Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM21. It's Stage Racer, and this is episode 78. We're in the Giro. It is stage 7, and it's a punchy stage. I did not expect there to be time gaps. I was not going to film this one at all, but I also knew that if I quick simmed it, there would be time gaps, and we might miss out. So I took it upon myself to just kind of get through the stage. But now that we are approaching the end with uh, 14K left to go, 13.5K left to go, we find ourselves with a final breakaway rider remaining, Hofstetter, and a peloton of just 21. Now, I had a little something to do with the split because, if you remember, we are currently leading the King of the Mountains classification. So, with a little Category 3 here and the breakaway that had four riders in it starting to split up, it still had all four through the first two KOMs, but over that last one, it was down to, I think, two riders left off the front. So I was going, oh, points, sure. So I accelerated, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, without even attacking, just accelerating, uh, I split the field up, and we have just 21 left in the peloton, and that push has remained. We have another little KOM coming up here in just a moment. I would like to push for that, but uh, at the same time, if we push too hard here, uh, we are expecting to see, well, not much energy left for the uh, final run-in with 11K to go. So uh, for now, we're going to take it a little bit easy. I, I think we'll make contact with these five here momentarily. Uh, Pagacher, there's... There is that attack, but yes, there's there three guys now going clear left. at the moment, and nobody's chasing them particularly hard, but I do not quite have the energy to uh, do much chasing myself, and we're going to have to accept that I'm not picking up points on this one. That's okay. I'm not that interested in the uh, in the points here, but I am now second as Hofstetter, who's been in the breakaway all day, took first over all three of those uh first ones pick it up you know three seven seven points that's 17 points to uh pretty much double what he had uh, at the moment we are still clear of the chasing group but the chasing group is only 10 seconds behind so uh with the amount of energy that i have actually 6k to go is not that far off but, uh, only five kilometers left you know with him at least trying to i suppose attack me here it's not that bad of an idea to keep pushing on but it's three and a half k and those two have actually stayed away of venipol and go do uh, they are not a big threat to the overall but how is it that i'm working harder than everybody else nobody wants to chase those two down apparently 2k to go uh, i've got to have enough for that final run in and i really do not have much but here we are into that final k Hopefully I get same time as the rest of this group and we'll be a few seconds behind those two who are very much fading at the end. Their little sprint is going nowhere, but they do get the stage win and they're going to get about 10 seconds uh, over us in the chasing group. Hopefully I just get that same time. I really don't want to miss out. I was the tail end of the group. Pagatcher off the back. He better be given a time gap. Uh, this game is frustratingly... If you miss that by a bike length, they, they give a gap. In fact, I checked back on one. I don't remember if it was career mode or here, uh, but there was a gap right in the middle of a group, and I watched it back uh, after the fact, and there was no gap. There there was literally no gap in terms of you know bike to bike. There is literally overlap in between the riders. They are side by side where the gap was given between two riders literally side by side you know there's not even like a oh small gap no no gap whatsoever at a time gap was given uh, and we were the ones who had done all the work on that stage uh, uh, just frustrating to see that here pagatcher is clearly off the back has clearly missed and I'm assuming there's more likely going to be a gap in front of me than there would be Pagatcher behind me. But we'll we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I could be eating my words here in a moment. I will happily eat those words because Pagatcher deserves to lose some time on that one. <laughs> no time gaps given, actually, including 
Fenipole and Godou don't even get their 10 or 11 seconds that they had picked up. But Pogacar misses no time. Vlasov and Carapaz even further off the back lose no time. You have a top 16 all on same time. So there you go. In order to save Pogacar, they had to screw Fenipole and Godou in the process. Likewise, you know, myself. But uh, there you go. Game and its typical screw you attitude <laughs> so the standings now we continue to climb remember uh, we had that team time trial at the opener to this thing that that did put us quite a bit off the back and uh, i've seen it mentioned in the comments and i've seen lots of likes clicked on on those comments so a lot of you feel the way that i i should be foregoing the team time trial just quick sim it and the damage would be less uh but in all honesty, I enjoy the challenge of trying to figure it out, trying to sort it out, trying to get extract the most out of it. And I'm never going to get to the point where we do have that figured out and do get the most out of it if I don't practice at it, if I don't do it. And I'll be honest with you, I play this game a lot on channel. I don't play it at all off channel any longer. So uh, it, I put in tons of hours, you know, for it on the channel, and therefore it is all the time that I'm going to to get out of it. So it's the only place I have to to practice and and get better at that. And I'm not afraid to be vulnerable in front of you on camera. I'm not afraid to suck at times i know that i'm consistent enough i know that i do enough you know we play on the hardest difficulty and win plenty often i don't win all the time and that's a good thing i don't lose all the time that's also a good thing either one of those versions would probably have a lot of you turning things off but winning relatively consistently but occasionally enough that it you know it mixes it up uh, and having a weakness and it, acknowledging that weakness there's nothing wrong with that and while it might have hurt our chances in this race a little bit look we've we've climbed from outside of the top 100 to inside the top 100 to inside the top 25 to you know we're up to 13th and we're very much in this thing Pagacher should have just lost the the lead of this race uh, he absolutely lost 40 seconds on that stage. He'd still be, he'd still be well ahead of us. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, and we sit 13th. Either way, we're working our way up, and we're not even into the big stages yet. It's all been just little punchy stuff thus far. I am so excited for this stage. It is a monster individual time trial a great great opportunity to gain significant time but my race day condition of course could greatly impact this thing as what we are seeing right now is a time trial that is taking well over an hour and we're seeing gaps of close to 20 minutes we're seeing gaps of multiple minutes just inside the top 10 top 20 so uh super super excited plus one okay i have a plus one race day condition but that's giving me an 82 on my time trial today and an 80 on my resistance so that means that's placing us at about an 81 there is some climbing that's an 85 so i would average everything out to quality wise I've got about an 82 to to give to offer on this one that is not going to put me up there with sobrero or william bartha or uh, ivanich but i would hope that that would get me up there somewhere around campanarts debad balmer uh, maybe craddock if we are better than gegenhart i will certainly accept that i would be really upset if we're below that uh but here's the tricky thing on this one, balancing this thing out because it is a crazy long distance. I mean, we're talking about a 55 kilometer time trial 
with four climbs along the way. One easy climb in the middle. We've got two climbs very early on. And what I'm seeing is a lot of riders are going fairly hard through these first couple of climbs early on and then settling in and then saving some for the finishing climb, which is definitely not the easiest. Here's that middle climb that's fairly easy, fairly routine. You got a couple downhill sectors and here is that initial climb, two initial climbs. Not intense, the last climb is definitely the most intense, uh, but let's take control. I think we're gonna end up settling in somewhere around maybe a 74 effort, but that's after a while. And I'm seeing that out of the box. We're gonna go with uh, an 86 here. And get ourselves you know, up and running, get these first couple climbs going with a, a bit of a push, a bit of a deficit, and then we're gonna make that up. Uh, and I think that's gonna help us get you know, uh, out here quickly and really set off and make up some time early and then we're gonna have to try to hang on to it. And I'm normally all about the just consistent time throughout uh, as we've expended a lot of energy already just in that initial climb. I see others kind of doing the same. I, I do wanna kind of back off for the uh, descent here though. I don't know why I would put in much effort for that one. Okay, uh, we're not gonna go quite as hard here for the second climb. I think we've already gone pretty dang deep. Uh, deeper than I would like to, so I'm at an 82 right now uh, for the second climb. I think we've already made up time here, and now uh, still want to spend energy but not go crazy. All right, and now we're going to settle in as we get to the top, getting our speed up first and then easing off, and now we're at a 74. We'll see what a 74 does for us uh, through this first sector, but my energy is essentially half expended for this thing inside the first 10k, uh, which I'm not a big fan of, of going deep, but uh, I think there was a lot of time to be had, and obviously the climbing part is There's my strength. Reference time coming in. So when Craig Anderson goes to the top now, uh, still just inside that 110 mark. Okay, another little bit of an uphill swing through here but that 74 actually is not panning out terribly well for me right now as we are uh well we've gone really deep we A better be on top we are record. on top at the first time jack so that that's good i'm a minute ahead there but how well can we hang on to things uh down the stretch i'm, I'm down to a 71 on the effort level right now but I'm a good time trial, so with little effort, I should be able to put in a pretty solid time. But you can see uh, we've caught up to Leonard Kamna. Okay, third climb of the day. And I seem to still be making up time on him. I'm going to back off even more because I just... I'm not a fan of uh, that effort that I put in. I think I, I think I went way too deep on that one. This thing is crazy long. And we've still got 22k to go, and I just do not have a whole lot left in the tank. You can't see it behind me, but uh, I'm pretty low, pretty low on my yellow bar right now. So down to a 68. Second time check. We'll see how well I've hung on to things. Definitely went way, 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 way too deep. Dude, Second time really check. Still in the lead, the but it's down to 45 to seconds, and I'm almost out of energy. I'm almost out of energy. I did. I I blew it. I blew up. I blew up. I went too deep. Now I'm seeing Foss coming to the end, and you know he had too much left in the tank. But I've done the opposite. I'm I'm into. I'm I'm out of yellow bar. I am burning up my red bar right now, and I'm just slowing down more and more to try to maintain it. But once we hit that climb, it is gonna fall off, and I'm losing pace. I'm down to 47 kilometers an hour instead of cruising, you know, in the low 50s. I've got uh, just just a little bit left here. Yeah. I, I, sh I know better than this. I know better than this. I pushed way too hard early on. Okay, how I'm maintaining right now at least, but I'm I'm down all the way down to 60 on the effort. Climbing and maintaining, so I'm gonna go a little harder here. 
Coming up on the finish line. Accelerating now. And out of energy. Down to 20th. Down to 20th. Minute 49. I lost two and a half minutes in that final sector. Two and a half minutes lost there. Now, of course, I had gained a minute in that first sector on everybody, which was awesome, but going too hard too early. That is why I like to maintain consistency. It usually pays off. I usually do really well. That was a poor time trial uh, on my part. Already dropped in one place, so that's one rider ahead of me. And we're going to see some others. Definitely going to see some others. Yeah, this was far from far from my best time trial. That was maybe the longest one that I've ever done in PCM 21. And at the same time, I've had time trials in the 40K range, but I have not had time trials with four climbs and that kind of length. So seeing my teammates uh, go deep early I only went deep for that first climb but even then that was just ridiculous I do get into the top 10 however I mean it was still way better than most of those guys but I'm at three minutes down and I did not gain in the manner that I could gain uh, so for that I'm, I'm disappointed in myself I, I could have done so much better with that one yeah uh, but like I said I'm, I'm not afraid of being vulnerable and going for it and i went for it here and it did not pan out uh, in the manner that i would hope all in all it's still a game but i think i if i played it the way i normally play it conservative consistent i would have gained significantly more minimum a minute uh and we'd be higher up the order than we were I think there was far, far more time in me than uh, than what I gave on that one. Uh, but trying new things is uh, not something I'm opposed to. Foss put in a really good time on, on the stage here. Uh, yeah, I, I think minimum I would have been a minute better, which would have put me quite a bit higher up. Uh, I would have been about sixth at this point. Uh, probably in between Demoulin and Bernal is where I would expect to be based on a more metered approach to that one instead of coming out aggressive and then settling in. My settling in, I didn't settle in at the right pace on that one, which is what cost us at the end, why we lost so much time. Of course, I wouldn't have lost two and a half minutes at the end, but I also wouldn't have been in as strong a position, even if I went out hard and then settled in at the right pace from there that pace was just way too much you know somewhere in between would have been uh would have worked but that means i would have lost time between sector well i, I wouldn't have been as strong at the end of sector one and then i would have been definitely further down sector two i, I would have been at least a minute worse off but I wouldn't have lost two and a half minutes in the final stage. I would have lost maybe a minute. Uh, anyway, hard to hard to estimate, but I know for sure we'd be higher off, higher up. Uh, that was that was far from my best time trial. Uh, but like I said, I'm unopposed to to trying new things and seeing how they go. And it has been mentioned to you know, push harder at times. And that's why I don't do it. That's why I don't do it. Because it does not pan out well. Uh, consistent approach seems to have the biggest net gain long term. And that that cost me a minute to a minute and a half from where I could have been. And we're on to stage number nine. It's a punchy stage. We've already gone through two big mountains ish. They're not that big, but big enough that uh, they were worth a lot of points for the KOM. In fact, they were uh, worth the enough points to the match the current leader of the KOM the each climb. I think I picked up speed. some points on the second one. First one, I was I, I was going at times eight speed, and just before the top of the climb, the I increased the my effort, no and 
tried to turn that into ooh, I do not have the energy to be attacking here I was thinking about attacking but uh, okay last 400 meters let's go ahead and do that there you go uh, I had I have 44 points, so I have picked up some a, a decent amount of points here. Uh, so I got some points over the second one because in both of those other riders attacked as I went, you know, late, just up effort to be near the front, just used a small amount of energy, uh, and then just did so again there. I think I got more of the points on on this one, uh, about six. Uh, but I was at 28 initially, so I did get some points at least the second time over a decent amount, and still sit in a good position in the king of mountains as we're about to hit the actual uh, mountaintops on the next stage now this next one is one i'm interested in more so because it's going to impact the stage the final run in you have 10k to go but you have a nice little descent there you get a little bit of recovery in and then it's a short distance to the finish line so right now with 95 riders i could see doing a little something on this one potentially and kind of getting out there and thinning the field a little bit so see what we can do with this three and a half k to go you can see plenty of writers are pushing hard right now but many are not going to keep up okay 2.2k let's start accelerating one and a half k to go big push now this is just straight up big push so what can we do to keep up the pressure the and that is, is the over the, the top down to 24 riders and now i'm second place with 51. it did thin the field but it came back together but we're seeing a huge acceleration right now this is 10 15 riders Five trying to attack away nearly getting separation in fact there is separation eight and five away we've only got a couple bike links between us and them and that's together now 13 riders coming up two and a half k to go can we attack now can we gain separation on our way towards the finish line we are nine seconds clear but i'm out of red bar so they're gonna come back at me and it's yeah, I tried to surprise them. I'm never going to beat really them in a sprint head-to-head. Pagatcher, Bernal, go do. Uh, but I am in a small group of 13, the crossing the finish line, the ahead of a chasing group of 37, 22 second advantage. Probably not going to give it to us, no, in this game. Yeah, no time gaps given until 55th place at a minute 55. Uh, of course, game does that to you all the time. So we remain in ninth place. Uh, Again, that time trial clearly could have gone better than it did. But all in all, I was actually fourth among all of the contenders. All those riders in the top 20, I was fourth on the day compared to everybody. So uh, it wasn't bad. It just, we know, you and I both know, based on where I'm normally at with time trials, that we could have been higher than we were. You know, that 81, 82-ish average across the board. I, I should have been you know top two top three but i was fourth i just I, I know there was a good minute more than what we got out of that but either way it was enough to get into the top 10 enough to start being a part of what is to come which is the mountain stages and we're not in terrible shape right now uh, but that team time trial certainly cost us a lot and that time trial individual on this rare occasion actually cost me a little bit that's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Kathleen Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.